All right, so we're at the park with the JD-509 altitude hold camera copter. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a test flight. This one I'm gonna have, this is a manually tilt adjust camera where you can only tilt just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and push it all the way up so it's kind of straightforward for this flight. Got the SD card in there, batteries plugged in. I like these ones that have a little switch so you can plug in the battery and just turn it on whenever you want to. And also it's uh, kind of advised to have a little platform if you're in like a grassy area, just in case you it's flying kind of weird, you can do a calibration, um, level it with your cell phone or something, a cell phone app to uh, self level the platform. So you have kind of a level surface to work with. But anyway, I'm gonna take this one. Um, this should be kind of cool. It's got like a spring loaded throttle here. So it should self altitude hold itself. And it has a couple other features like one button to arm and stuff. So this should be kind of cool. Let's see how this one does. And also, I think this button also lands it automatically as well. So I'm going to go ahead and give this thing a flight, see how it does. So power's on to bind up and down. And we can see that when we do bind it, you still can't control the motors, which is kind of a cool safety feature. You actually have to press this button to arm and start the propellers moving. So we're going to go ahead and arm it. Start the video. Actually, before I arm it, to disarm, you've got to pull these to the back left like that. But before I arm it, I'm going to go ahead and take a photo there and then also make sure hit that for a video recording and we should see on the bottom that red blinking light there that means the video is recording so we're ready to go so let's see how this thing flies going ahead and starting the propellers and we're in rate one just going to go ahead and take off so real mellow flyer because it is kind of a camera bird and uh so you noticed how i let off the throttle there and it is just kind of maintaining its altitude very well. It's gonna fluctuate a little bit, but apparently this thing must have some kind of barometer in it to know its altitude, which is very cool. And the throttle just springs back to the center. Now it is kind of uh, flying off in that direction just a little bit because it's not gonna lock in. It doesn't have any GPS, so it's not gonna lock in its horizontal position. So you're still gonna have to control it around. Do you have kind of a variable um, winds right now coming from mainly this direction? Let's see how this thing does. I'm gonna go ahead and save some power and turn off the lights here by pressing this light button. And uh, let's just fly this around. So this is the right one. Real smooth and mellow. I'm going to go into rate two. You're going to hear two beeps by clicking that top button there. A little bit more speed. And then rate three gives you just a few more degrees. And you're going to hear three beeps. So you can see how fast it's flying. So really impressed with the altitude hold on this one. It makes it so much easier to take video and pictures. Speaking of pictures, let's get up some, let's get some altitude here. I'm going to get up to maybe 75 to 100 feet, sit there and snap some photos. So I'm gonna just kinda snap some photos while I'm up there. Cool. So far range is good, let's go bring it down. And this one is gonna come down really slow. I have the throttle all the way down and you can see how it's just really slowly coming down. And that's usually the case with an altitude hold barometer module in quads like this. But anyway, let's go ahead and go get out there, see what the range is like. I'm going to fly all the way to the other end of the park. About 100 feet now. 150. So still in full control at maybe 2, 250. I can barely see it now and still in full control. Maybe about 300 feet now. All the way at the end and it still is not dropping out. I didn't, I couldn't feel any dropouts. I'm going rolling back and forth. So really good range on this one. I'm gonna come on back here with the wind. It's flying back really fast. So let's go ahead and do a, I do notice it's dropping really slow when I have the throttle all the way down. But that's okay for a camera bird like this. Anyway, let's fly out a little bit and then try the return to home and headless features. So uh, headless mode, clicking in this button here. 
going to hear a constant beep and I'm just kind of yawing around and then also I, since I launched in this direction let's see what happens when we pull back so it's a little off maybe a little skewed to the left but not bad at all if you're panic mode and you just need to pull it back towards you you can't see your orientation this will work okay so that's headless mode gonna stay in headless mode and then do a uh, return to home by pressing this key here okay so it's thinking return to home <laughs> unfortunately is way off in that direction so we're gonna get out of headless mode by clicking that headless button again now the wind's kind of picking up so getting out of headless mode let's drop it down a bit and uh, let's do a uh, return to home so we're going to kind of stay there about 75 feet away from me and hit this one key return. And then you're going to hear this beeping. And unfortunately its compass is very skewed. You can see it going off in that direction. So that's nowhere near me. So it did get skewed somehow on its um, original launch location. Not sure why. And now we're coming back to us. Low level lights, I see the lights blinking. So that was a pretty short flight. So just gonna kind of fly around in rate three and kind of see how fast this thing is. It's not the fastest, this is not gonna be a sport flyer. This is gonna be more oriented to uh, taking some camera shots and video and having that cool um, altitude hold. So we're just gonna kinda let it, this one's cool. When it does land itself, you can actually hit this button here, the start stop button. If I can just get it here, and then hit that start stop button and you'll see it kinda drop. You can still control pitch and roll, but it will drop, it will land. And I'm gonna show you that I'm not touching any throttle. And it does shut off the propeller. So that's really cool. If you panic out, hit that button and it will land and shut itself off. So really good for beginner flyers. Let's go ahead and launch again and let it do its um, self-landing when it reaches its low voltage. I'm going to go ahead and launch. And what I'm going to do is, just to show its altitude hold, is I'm just going to hover here. And I'm not even going to try to touch the controller, maybe fix the pitch and roll a little bit as it wanders with the wind. But I'm not going to touch the throttle. And you can really see, okay, now it's going into its low voltage landing. But you can really see how well it held its altitude. So now that the low voltage kicked in, it landed. And it did automatically shut off the motors to prevent any kind of battery problems. Anyway guys, that was a great test of the JD509. I didn't do any flippings here at the park. It seemed like the battery may be a little short-lifed on this one. Um, this may be a good um, candidate for a larger battery. It seems like it does have some room in here. And so I'll probably be putting a, lar a larger battery in there. You could go about another inch further back in here to get a bigger battery in there. So definitely be trying this with a bigger battery. But I will be doing some flips in the house. Let's go do a house flight. And then after that, we'll go back to the bench and do our final pros and cons and see exactly how this thing did. All right, so we're in the house with the JD509. Going to get some no wind environment house flight. See how it does. Okay, so if stuff gets out of whack or uh, even if you crash or maybe for your first flight even, I'd recommend doing a gyro accelerometer recal. Make sure your trims are centered. You're going to hear that steady beep on all your trims. That long beep, that means they're all centered. And then go ahead and just pull both of your sticks to the bottom middle. And you're going to see the light start to flash. And it's just centering that horizontal level. So make sure you do it on a level surface. Let's go ahead, see, go ahead and see how this thing does. For this one, cool factor. Start and stop the motors by pressing one button. It's ready to fly. Unfortunately, the stop button doesn't work. You can see that there. Even holding it will not shut off the motors, so you do have to do this down and back left and right to shut them off. All right, let's see how it does. So the awesome thing about this quad is it has an altitude hold. And since it has an altitude hold function, 
go ahead and start the camera first off. Let me take a photo and then uh, start the camera recording just by pressing these buttons here. I have started the video and we can see that that red lights blinking underneath the quad there. So this has a spring-loaded throttle and we can see how it will keep its altitude pretty well, pretty good. So not touching the controller and we can see it kind of going just a little bit up and down but really minor and a little bit of drifting but you can actually fly around with the stick and it will maintain its altitude in here so I'm assuming it has some kind of barometer which is really cool. We can see that it's not really losing any altitude or gaining any altitude it's staying, staying pretty much the same as where it was even at full pitch and roll while we fly. Let's go through some of the modes here. Um, the, the throttle response is going to be a little sluggish since it does have probably a barometer. Uh, it's a little sluggish and that's how GPS quads are too. But let's just try do a little bit of a lift test. I'm going to drop it a little bit. The cool thing too is there's also a little bit of a dead spot here. So even if you push up and down a little bit on this, it won't mess with the self-leveling until you give it a little more input. So, little lift test, full throttle up. You can see how it is pretty slow. This is meant to be a little camera quad, so it's going to be slow. Full throttle down. Nice steady little drop, not too fast. It won't cut the motors off. Let's go ahead and go into a um, higher rate of flight. That would be the speed button, speed button up here on top. So this is, uh, it's got three rates. Let's go ahead and do a yaw test in rate one, rate two, rate three. So all the same seemingly. No, actually they do get a little bit more gradual actually. Rate one, two, three. So each one does speed up a little bit. Okay, well there's our low level blinking lights already kicking in. So it's really quick different rates of flight. You can see that all three rates give it a little bit more pitch and roll. So very good. So real quick controller shutoff test. One, two, three. Oh, that's great. Okay. So kind of hit the door there, but really cool feature. You shut off the controller, it slowly drops won't damage itself, it lands and it does shut off the controllers once it knows it's landed. So that is really cool and that's probably using that barometer that's built in. Alright so I know we're hitting the low voltage already but I just wanted to show you guys how you can do also a, um, there's a button here for landing if you don't want to just pull it down to land. So let's go ahead and try that real fast. So when you are flying Wherever you are, press this start stop button. It'll go ahead and land automatically. Once it touches down, it goes ahead and stops the motors. Kind of like what it did when we shut off the controller for that um, controller shut off test. So real cool. This one is, I'm really, really liking this one. To save some power during the day, you just press the lights and the lights will shut off. Now that it's in the low voltage, they're still going to blink. But if you do press this when you're flying uh, and it's not in low voltage, the lights will shut off to save you some more power. Let's just go ahead and fly it until it goes into its uh, self-landing and shut off. So. Just going to hover here. So it's already going into its low voltage landing. So you can see how it landed. And there's really nothing you can do uh, once it goes into its low voltage landing aside from kind of controlling where it's going to land. It goes ahead and lands, shuts off the, the motors so you won't destroy the battery. So really cool feature. This thing is, these toy grade copters are really getting advanced, especially the ones that have this. Uh, barometer in here for that um, altitude hold flight. This one really does a good job. Anyway guys, I think you pretty much know how much I like this thing by now, but let's just take it back to the bench anyway, get our flight times, get our, um, you know, our range testing 
uh, specifics on it and just go ahead and go through a final pros and cons and see how this thing did. Hey guys, welcome back. So we're back at the bench doing some pros and cons with the uh, JD-509 quadcopter, altitude hold quadcopter, and I must say I am very impressed with this thing. Um, it really exceeded expectations as far as uh, what I was expecting. This thing did a great job, and I'm going to go through some of the pros and cons now. I'm going to get some flight test specs up there, some run times. So let's get started. So basically, first of, first of all, uh, this thing kind of looks like you probably can tell from the way it looks. It's kind of a copy of the way the unique, I think it's the unique 500 looks around there, something like that, the unique 500, I believe. The JD-509 had three rates of flight, and all three rates were perfect as far as the pitch, the roll, and the yaw, as far as I'm concerned, were spot on. They did a great job at hitting those things on the mark. Something I would have liked to have seen was the um, camera pitch. It only pitches, you know, maybe like 30 degrees here of pitch. You can go from just about straight forward to maybe 30 something to 45 degree down. Uh, so it would have been nice if maybe one more thing, I know this is asking a lot, but a lot of the quads nowadays have um, one more button on their controller where you can actually remotely rotate the camera. So it really would have been neat to um, to see that on this one, just if you could change positions, like even just from straight forward, click a button, have it go down at a 45 degree or so would be would have been pretty cool. Now altitude hold, that is the main selling point of this quad and it does it perfectly. As far as I'm concerned, it does it even better than some of the more expensive GPS quads, like the couple, the several hundred dollar quads. Um, this thing, when I was hovering, uh, really, when you let off that control stick, the throttle stick, it will actually hover, I, I really only saw it varying from one to two feet of height. And that was in like with some wind. When there was no wind, it would be less than a foot of variance in height. And it would just lock its position and stay there and you could hover around all you wanted. Even in the fast rate, um, you could go around flying as fast as you wanted to and it would always maybe drop a little bit and then it would always come back up to its altitude it remembered as that it was at when you did let off the stick here to give it its um, altitude hold feature. So really extremely impressed that a toy quad of this price has this type of barometer on it or whatever it's using. It must be some kind of barometer in the electronics um, to give you that precise of an altitude hold. Now when you do flip with it, when you do hit the right trigger and you do your flips, it will drop. It seemed like with the stock battery it was dropping about um, maybe four to five feet. But the funny thing is if you didn't touch the throttle here, it would come back to exactly the altitude it left when you did do your flip. So that's also pretty commendable to, for it to remember its altitude that well. There's no dropping out of the sky, any of that stuff. So it worked really well. If you don't really know how to land and you want it to land itself, all you do is press this button one time. And wherever you are in the sky, it'll just go down slowly, land, and it will shut off the propellers. So really good um, features there. Also, the, um, the transmitter shutoff test, it did the same thing. It basically triggered its slow landing, touched the ground, and shut off. So they implemented all those things very well as far as I'm concerned. The only thing is if you did um, land it with a stick and you're on the ground, you do have to pull the sticks to the bottom left and right to disarm the motors. And I just got to touch on the, um, the lighting as well one more time. The lighting was great. I wish more quads would do this where if they're going to have LEDs on the bottom like this, go ahead and bring out a cup that diffuses the lighting that you can see from the sides. Um, that is really something that all quad manufacturers have to do. If you can't do that, put something on the corners where the lights are visible from the sides and the front so you can tell your orientation orientation in, in night flight. So a really good job at putting these little diffuser cups on the bottom. So getting to the range and the flight times, the range on this thing at the park was at least 300 feet. I went from corner of the park all the way across to the other corner of the park, maybe even further, and that was about 300 or so feet, and I didn't have any, um, I don't think I had any controller hiccups. And then as far as the flight times go, the stock LiPo, this is the stock LiPo. They're giving you the 600 mAh LiPo, and I was getting uh, five minutes until the low voltage 
blinking lights and then another um, 50 seconds about until the low voltage landing where it would just come down touch the crown and shut off its propellers so 50 seconds of landing time is great once you see the lights blinking, you have plenty of time to come in and land it. It's not going to shut off midair on you or anything like that. Now, if you want a lot more flight time, I did go ahead and try this battery out. This is a 900 mAh, 3.7 volt LiPo. And this is from the L6055 flying car uh, quad that I'm currently in review of. And this thing fits perfectly nice and snug in here. And it gives you the extra 300 mAh of capacity. And you can find this battery, you should be able to click on the link for this quad, take you to the website where this quad is, and you should be able to find this battery. It's the L6055 quad car quadcopter battery, and it really does fit perfectly in here. I think it's the biggest battery that this can fit. And the flight times it was getting with this were 7 minutes and 30 seconds until the low voltage blinking lights, and then a whole nother minute and a half until it would actually land. So a total of 9 minutes of flight time with this one. So I'd really recommend getting something like this. You can see how much larger this is than the stock battery. The camera, you can see the quality in the flight video I had up for the pictures and the video. So you can make your own assumption on that. But um, I must say this is a winner in my book. If you're looking for a first quad and you want to get into some minor photography just to see how it feels and you want something that's easy to control, flies well, keeps its altitude so you don't have to keep paying attention to going up and down. This thing is awesome for the money. I'll have the links down in the description of where you can pick this up. Highly recommended. They, got, they really got this one right, and I'm really impressed with it. But anyway, guys, I do a lot of reviews like this. I do a lot of mods, flight tests, reviews, all kinds of stuff on RC cars, action cams, quadcopters, hexacopters, from large GPS ones to small little nanos. So go ahead and check out the channel. I think you'll like it. And anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.